We're joined now by Michael Cutler, a former INS and DEA officer concerning this issue. Michael, we thank you for joining us today on America's Forum. J.D., I thank you so much for uh, you inviting me on, and it, it's great to be with you again. You know, the last time you and I were together was November of 2001, right after the attacks of 9-11. If you recall, you attended that um, House caucus hearing back when you were a member of Congress, um, and we looked at the uh, flaws of the immigration system that enabled the terrorists to enter the United States and carry out those deadly attacks. And I must tell you in all sincerity, Michael, for me, it was a, uh, it was a Damascus Road moment uh, as we begin to understand that border security is national security. Now, for your part, Michael, you say an open uh, door at our border with Mexico is about as sensible as leaving the front door to your home unlocked 24 right. hours a day. Here's my question. You've testified in front of innumerable congressional committees. Yes. Shouldn't immigration enforcement be a nonpartisan issue? You would think. You would think. But the, the way it becomes nonpartisan is that both parties see gain in open borders. And by the way, it's not just the Mexican border. You know, I like to make the point that we're a nation of 50 border states. Any state that has an international airport has access to the thousands of miles of meandering U.S. coastline or lies along the northern or southern borders are, of course, border states. That means every state. So how in the world do you defend a country when your borders are wide open, we have millions, and I don't believe the 11 million figure any more than I believe that 6.4 or 6.3 percent unemployment rate. We have tens of millions of foreign nationals in our country, not just from Mexico, from the whole world. No way of knowing who they are or why they're here. What could possibly go wrong? And, you know, I provided testimony to the 9-11 Commission, and they made it clear that border security is synonymous with national security and that immigration fraud giving identity documents lawful status to people who are not able to prove who they really are enables terrorists to enter our country and embed themselves in their jargon i call it hiding in plain sight so we've got open borders drugs pouring across the border which by the way jd and i think you'll agree with me based on your experience in congress if you want to know if the border is secure the arrest numbers are worthless look at how cheap and available heroin and cocaine are. We are in the middle of the worst heroin epidemic this country has had in many decades. And while so, we see the drugs come in, Michael, there, there are other reports here stateside highlighting the fact that illegal aliens in this country are currently being treated better than the American homeless population. For example, the, uh, the statistics we have, 610,000 homeless people in the U.S., 15,000 of them living unsheltered, nearly one-fourth of all homeless people were, were children. Now, it's, it's interesting when you take a look at this paradox. In one sense, you say the illegals are hiding in plain sight. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the talking point from so many politicians on both sides of the aisle is that they are, quote, in the shadows. The, the bottom line question is this. In your opinion, Mike, are illegal immigrants a higher priority for the Obama administration than American citizens? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I just testified before the Senate Judiciary Committee. And, by the way, I've got to make one other analogy. You talk about the homeless. Look at the deplorable situation where medical care and our veterans is concerned. I assure you that those illegal aliens are getting to see doctors a lot sooner than our veterans. But, of course, the illegals are, are the priority. And not only the illegals, legal immigrants, the idea that we are bringing in hundreds of thousands of foreign students and foreign workers who are supplanting American workers. We have more than a million foreign students studying in American schools across the country. 9,000 foreign students, far, schools rather, that bring in the foreign students. No way of knowing if the schools even exist. We know that the terrorists on 9-11, in fact, uh, we're going to school. In fact, I testified in March of 2002 how two of the dead terrorists, Mohammed Atta and Marwan al Shehi, were granted authorization to go to flight school six months after the attacks. So with all this going on and this desire to bring in more high-tech workers when the unemployment rate for high-tech workers is double what it is for American high-tech workers, this is about driving American wages down and in many cases supplanting American workers with foreign workers who will work for much cheaper wages not just at the bottom rung, but even in the middle class and in the high-tech jobs. And that's what Alan Greenspan called for. Um, well, I don't know if you know this, but in 2009, Greenspan testified for Chuck Schumer over in the Senate. He referred to Americans with skills as the privileged elite earning a wage premium because he claimed 
that they weren't being subjected to foreign competition. In point of fact, our immigration laws and our borders are supposed to shield Americans from three things. Uh, unfair foreign competition in the workforce, aliens with dangerous communicable diseases, and aliens who pose a threat to national security and public safety. Of course, we're supposed to be shielded, and Greenspan and company, both sides of the aisle, want to take those shields down at a very perilous time. Well, Michael, you certainly make the case that those shields are not in place currently, and this is going to be an issue that's going to be uh, with us for a long time. I want to focus on what Hillary Clinton said recently. She weighed in on the flood of illegal immigrants pouring into border states and whether they should be sent home or not. Take a listen to what the former First Lady and Secretary of State had to say. We need to do more to provide border security in so southern Mexico. They should be sent back now. Well, they should be sent back as soon as it can be determined who responsible adults and their families are because mm -hmm. there are concerns about whether all of them can be sent back, but I think all of them who can be should be reunited with their families. So Michael, what's your take on what Hillary Clinton had to say there? Well, I, I could be glib and say what difference does it make what she has to mm -hmm. say? Uh, you know, and I, by the way, I'm a registered Democrat. I don't know how this ever got, gets portrayed as a conservative issue. This is an American issue. Yeah, and J.D. Well, raised today, that point as well. It should be a bipartisan issue. It, it absolutely. This is an American issue. But, but here's the point. The administration is now flying the illegal alien kids to be reunited with their parents in the United States without asking the parents what their immigration status is. So clearly, you've got the parents, you've got the aliens. If indeed the parents are illegal, you want family reunification? There's your opportunity for family reunification, but it's not being done. And, and, you know, here's the other part of the problem. One of the arguments we hear from the open borders crowd, both sides of the aisle, well, we can't deport 11 million. I would argue it's probably 30 or 40 million by now. So every day when more come here, they, the case gets stronger from their perspective. Oh, my God, we have so many. What can we do? Well, we never said that about drunk drivers or murderers or bank robbers. You know, when we have a problem with drunk driving, you impose harsher penalties to deter. Here, you provide inducement and encouragement. And as I said before the Senate, uh, by talking about comprehensive reform and promising lawful status to illegal aliens, they have started, they fired the starter's pistol. And for aspiring illegal aliens around the world, our border is the finish line. And here's a final thought I want to give you, and this is for the audience as well. When I drive down to D.C. or wherever you get on the highway, there's usually two lanes, an easy pass express lane. You can go 55, and then the roadway has the technology to read your easy pass, and you barely slow down, or you pay cash and wait online. What would you do if they gave you a third lane that said free, no speed limit? What would it say about the mental stability or the thinking ability of anybody who would wait to pay uh, when they know they can jump into that third lane and travel whatever speed they want without paying anything. Mm -hmm. that that's is what we're doing with immigration. That is a striking metaphor, Michael Cutler, and we, we appreciate that. I, I want to get back to some of the comments on the question of family unification. The, the reverse, it seems to me, is true, since we're hearing so many of these minors uh, don't have their parents and they're going to be sent to, quote, the nearest relative. What does that say about parents abandoning, in a sense, their children to send them northward? We, we talked about Hillary Clinton a second ago. It's worth noting our current first lady has waded into this debate. She says much of our success in the United States has been because we're a nation of immigrants. Quote, in many ways, it is because of not in spite of our immigrant population, that we grow stronger every single day. Now, when you're talking immigration, that's a lawful act. Mm -hmm. We're talking about illegal entry into the country. And again, it is apparently a bipartisan mission to, to eliminate the word illegal, to eliminate the term illegal alien, to blur the lines and say this is an immigration debate. As they try to control the language on this, what should fair-minded Americans keep in mind, Michael Cutler? Okay, well, first of all, the term alien that's all, been ba all but been banned, uh, it's really Orwellian, isn't an insult. It's not the equivalent of the N-word. The term alien simply means any person, not a citizen or national of the United States. There is no insult there, but there is clarity. This is a game of obfuscating the truth and providing um, fog, if you will, and the fog machine is the words. Uh, second of all, and another metaphor, the difference between an immigrant and an illegal alien is comparable to the difference between a house guest and a burglar. We all love company, but not when people climb through our bedroom window in the middle of the night. And by the way, 
the reason for excluding an alien, and you can go to the law, it's Title Eight, United States Code, Section 1182, and this isn't going to be a law lesson, but I, I just want to make it clear that everything that I talk about is verifiable. It's supposed to keep out aliens with dangerous communicable diseases, serious mental illness, people who are violent, sex offenders, aliens who are convicted felons, human rights violators, war criminals, spies, terrorists, aliens who would become a public charge, or aliens who by working would displace an American worker or at the very least drive down wages. And that's so, the essence of what we're facing right now, Michael Cutler. Obviously, you have a lot to say on the issue. I thank you when you came to testify post 9-11 in Washington. We look forward to having you back to talk about this vexing problem on America's borders. Michael Cutler, former INS agent. He knows whereof he speaks. We'd like your response on this. Why don't you tweet us your comments at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum. My visit with Pete Holstra is next.